In this segment, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a follow up on my main channel segment. Check it out over at TimCast.net if you haven't seen it. But it's okay if you haven't because we can still talk about this. What we're going to be discussing is this excellent thread from at Vocal Distance, who gives a breakdown of far left tactics. If you've ever wondered how it is that they can be extremely violent, damaging property, attacking innocent people, yet still they get preferential media treatment. This breaks it down in a, uh, in, in a very succinct way. You see, the far left is very well organized. And I've often talked about this uh, as it pertains to the culture war, why it is conservatives tend to lose on, lose on a lot of these issues. And the reality is the far left is, well, like I said, organized. They have volunteers, they have plans, they have strategies, and they use people. They use people. So in, in a Portland-like situation, right, I've often mentioned how the mom block will come and link arms to protect the far left extremists. It's all about optics and propaganda. And they know this. And this thread from Vocal Distance actually breaks it down. It's quite clever. They want you to see in the media a mom being attacked because they want people in the suburbs to be triggered. They're trying to make sure that middle aged mothers feel like they are personally being attacked by these police. And I'm sure it's worked in certain capacities. However, most moms don't riot. Most moms don't protest. So I have to imagine that in the end, it is rather ineffective. But they still have their stated goal of, you know, attacking the feds, putting pressure on them and generating propaganda. The only problem, I think, is that they're losing. And that's basically what I said in my main channel segment over at TimCast.net. They are losing. The media is starting to realize this. And now they're desperate to blame all of this on Trump. You see, for as organized as the far left may be, they don't have a good macro view of what they're actually doing. However, as some have pointed out, it may actually be the intent of the far left to get Donald Trump elected. And I am not exaggerating. I mean this. You know why? They need moms to be angry so they get carte blanche from the media. But if it really was Joe Biden's America, then you will see a harsh crackdown like we did with Obama. You see, the Black Lives Matter protests and riots started under Obama. And there was no problem of governors and law enforcement to go in, attack people, arrest people, send in the National Guard. And well, and there you go. You see, if they actually win, if Biden wins, then the liberal establishment is going to say, shut them down. Their usefulness is done. As I've explained, they view the far left as like the one ring whose power they hope to wield, but they can't. Both sides are hoping to take advantage of the other. In the end, what the far left really wants is for Trump to win. They do. I've seen it. I've talked to people. Not all of them, not all of them, many of them no. but the strategists do because they know that the liberals, the regular liberals who normally don't care, are being radicalized by fake news in support of them. Let me read this for you. Wokel says, want to know how activists in places like Portland take over roads, smash windows, light buildings on fire, and still have the press call them nonviolent? Well, as it turns out, these are well-trained activists using intelligent, highly developed tactics. Primer. He then shows a bunch of news stories. For starters, none of this is spontaneous. Note that many protesters have shields. These shields take three hours each to make and are created by a group of 25 volunteers working all day. You don't do that spontaneously. It takes planning. Absolutely. I have actually been to these collective warehouses. I was in, I think it was France. Can't remember which country, actually. And we, I, I, it, there's a video somewhere on this channel where we walked around inside a massive facility. It was massive. And there had to be a hundred plus far leftists making shields and batons and flags. I believe it was France. They were preparing for this. I believe it may have been like a May Day protest or something. A big protest against the police and the government. Massive facility, mass producing weapons they could use, but they're very clever. They want you to think they're not attacking you. That's the point. Let's read on. It isn't just shields that are planned. Everything is from what protesters wear to the tactics chosen in each situation. The protesters also have a highly developed understanding of the information and media ecosystem and the tactics that work in the environment. The first strategy is to put their target in a decision dilemma. This is where they select a method of protest that leaves the person with no good options. No matter how the target reacts, they look bad. Yes, that is what is currently going on in Portland. They want to make sure the attacks they're using don't go over the top. Thus, 
the police are forced to react in an extreme way. I'll give you an example. Why was it that Mayor Ted Wheeler of Portland tweeted out, people are concerned the feds may be authorized to use live ammo? It served no purpose but to exacerbate the problems. You see, now he can come out and say, I was warning people to keep them safe. But he wants both sides to feel that, 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 that tension, that fear. He wants people to get armed with live ammo. And they have been getting armed. Just the other day, a shot was fired somewhere in Portland. The police found loaded magazines and Molotov cocktail, cocktail materials. This is all part of making the feds react in such a way that they can film it. And then, as he point out, well, I'll, I'll read this. They go for press releases. We'll get, we'll get to that in a second. He says, that strategy is paired with the real action is your target's reaction. You want to use someone's reaction to your protest against them. Blocking a road. If the police arrest you, play the martyr. If they don't, you now control the road. They can do whatever they want, scare people and force them to bend the knee, or they can say, help, help, I'm being repressed. The police are arresting peaceful protesters. You'll notice their media allies on Twitter will falsely frame things and pretend they're acting in good faith while accusing you of operating in bad faith. Those two strategies are used hand in hand to create actions, which activists can turn to their advantage. When they do this correctly, they can, they can create imagery that paints them as the underdogs, even when they are the aggressors. It's social and political jujitsu. It's exactly what they're doing in Portland. That's why I always point out the most important factor with Portland, Seattle, and most of these protests are that these people, the far left, are going to a building, the federal courthouse. The feds can't pick the building up and leave. They literally cannot retreat. So Antifa knows they can show up every day, use moms to say, we're peaceful protesters being attacked. Then they take those pictures of sympathetic victims and they can claim they're being repressed. It is quite literally the goal of Antifa to attack the police so the attack, so the police have no choice but to clear the crowd. And then what do they do? They show an image of a mom being beaten and they say, why are the feds beating the moms? Antifa is forcing them to do it. Yes, yes. You can argue that the feds could stand back and do nothing. But many of these officers are being injured and fires are being started. They're putting the cops in a decision dilemma. That's the point. That's what's being said. What can they do? Stand back and do nothing? Have the fires just tear through the building or spread around the outside? The fences get torn down or they can try and defend the building. So when they come out after the fences are torn down and yell at the crowd, get back, what do they do? They stand behind a mom or a vet and then say, look, they're attacking the mom. When in reality, the mom is in one video actually trying to pull down the fence with them. It's all propaganda. They're trying to force this perspective. Much of this is performative, but not in a look good to your peers kind of way. The principal, principal key is to play to the audience that isn't there. I'm going to skip over a lot of this because the point is very simple. They're trying to get moms in the suburbs. That's the battle right now. Trump lost many of these districts that were suburban, you know, middle class white neighborhoods. They want these moms to feel particularly attacked. I don't know if it'll work. I don't think so. Most people, like I said, won't write or protest. So they're not going to sympathize with these people. And most people do trust police. He then, Wogel then says, the next strategy is self-explanatory. Do the media's work for them. This is where activists make sure press releases and film footage that make them look good get into the hands of sympathetic journalists. This explains a lot of what gets on TV. Laziness. Many journalists will get sent a press release and photos and they'll say, ooh, that's a good story. I'm going to get a bunch of clicks. Officer bad. Innocent woman attacked. They'll ignore the context because it's easier just to release the press release with a photograph than actually do real reporting. You'll have some real journalists like this guy from the AP who actually went in the building and showed what was going on with the police. And you'll have a lot of fake news journalists that say, I support them and want to help them subvert, in which case they'll gleefully publish this and even embellish more to help out. There's been a lot of sympathetic coverage in the media. Much of it revolves around so-called wall of moms. The media stories that these moms are acting to protect the protesters from vicious police. However, it's just another strategy of the same activist playbook. And that strategy is lead with sympathetic characters. It's exactly what it sounds like. They put sympathetic people out in front to garner sympathy and create the appearance of underdogs fighting an uphill battle against powerful interests. The protesters have highly developed theory of protest optics. They understand videos can be sliced and diced to tell a certain story. 
So the story that resonates with people most wins. They are intentionally, they are intentional in trying to create moments on video that can go viral. That isn't to say they aren't also intentional in doing damage. They are. The Black Block, the book Black Block White Riot, Anti-Globalization and the Genealogy of Dissent uh, by author A.K. Tom- Thompson is the starting place for their theory on what counts as violence and when violence is justified. I'm not going to, go, going to go into the full details of that book, however. He ultimately ends by saying, the violence is intentional, where the wall of moms is meant to win hearts. The black bloc is there to intimidate. If police react to the violence with arrests, the wall of moms is there so protesters can c- claim the police attacked moms. See how the game works? What I want you to get from this is that none of what you are seeing is, sponta- is happening, happening spontaneously. These are high-level tactics that are given to people supported by a well-organized protest infrastructure. Where do you think all the people making the shields come from? These radical protesters have organized an infrastructure to, in their words, disrupt, dismantle, and deconstruct your society. It's beyond that. Many of these people are, are actively supporting the Democratic Party. They want Trump to appear as Cheeto dictator. That means they need pictures of the feds hitting a mom. The moms are extremists the same as anybody else. As I've stated before, if you link arms and protect a bank robber inside a bank, actively robbing that bank, you're an accomplice protecting them. If you walk outside and stop the cops from arresting them, you are an accomplice to that crime. However, all that matters is the picture. Most people will see the headline, mom beaten by Fed, and they'll say, geez, what is Trump? What is going on? And they won't know the context. The important thing here, and I'll wrap this up, that you can do, share videos like this. That's it. And let people know they are being manipulated. Some people will resist. Some people will say, whoa, I didn't realize that. And that's the best we can do for now. Counter the lies. I got a couple more segments for you in just a few minutes. Stick around and I will see you all shortly.